my name's Stuart and this is Mr Ali. We're here just to go through the latest government guidelines on the uh, coronavirus. Okay. So just to add to what um, um, Mr Byers already said, um, one of the reasons we're doing this is we understand that a lot of our students may not understand some of these words, so pandemic, um, some of the graphs, some of the information that are coming out. So to help them understand is probably the best way in you know, order for our youngsters to be able to take action and understand why they need to take action. So if we start with understanding the situation, so everything going around us, it's all in the media, um, everybody's aware of it, so key part, um, part of this is do we understand what's going on. So if you start with what is a pandemic, that is a word that's been thrown about all over news, all over the media, in papers, so what is a pandemic? A pandemic is basically an epidemic, but then if I use the word epidemic, what does that mean? An epidemic is a disease that is spreading. So to make it, keep it simple, epidemic is a disease that spreads amongst many people. So how does an epidemic fit into um, this word pandemic? A pandemic happens when it goes global. So we're looking at big areas. So we're looking at something worldwide. So the coronavirus at the moment, why do we call it a pandemic? Because it's not isolated or it's not in one area. If we look at it, we've got it in China, we've got it in the UK, where we are. We've got it in Italy, Germany, Spain, the US. So it's gone global, it's gone over a wide area. So once the disease goes over a wide area, we call it a pandemic. If I now go through a graph that might have been out quite a bit and this graph has been used on many occasions now if you understand this graph you will understand the approach that and the measures that are being taken and why they're being taken now if we look at this graph the key parts are there's two graphs in one so we're looking at the yellow graph and then we're looking at this green graph and what the yellow graph is showing is the top part of any graph is what we call the peak that is the highest point um, on this side now some of my year 10s, 11s and year 9s will recognise from maths and science lessons that this is what we call the y-axis, the bottom is what we call the x-axis. So on this side we're looking at the number of cases, the number of non-coronavirus -corona -corona positive test results. At the bottom we've got time, so as time continues it's increasing as we go along this x-axis. Anyway, the peak, the dot, dotted dashed line. This is, the best way to look at this is, imagine the number of beds in our hospitals. So the number of beds, so if I've got 100 beds, that is representing 100 beds in our healthcare system, our hospital capacity. Now, if we do nothing, if we take no action, we carry on our daily lives as normal, you can see that we will go way beyond, we'll have more people that we can't cater for than we have beds. So we, we are unable to provide beds in hospitals or provide good healthcare, good level of service for a huge range of people. So what we're trying to do is keep the situation below our capacity, the number of beds we've got in our healthcare system. So as long as we can be below this line, the dotted line, as a country we can manage to overcome this situation and everybody, everybody needs a decent level of care, especially in a situation like this. To get that decent level of care, we all need to take some form of action to try and minimise that peak and spread it. So what we're trying to do is flatten it. One way of representing that is using a bendy stick. So imagine that's the peak. Now what you'll notice is when I push down on this, so there's the peak, so what I'm trying to represent here is the yellow graph, but pushing down at it, what it's doing is it's not disappearing or the amount of space underneath is still the same, but by pushing down, we're spreading it. We're lowering the peak, but we're spreading the amount of cases over a wider period of time. And that is exactly what we're trying to do with this situation. And that, that is why the government's brought out quite a lot of these measures. So, to simplify this, the best way to look at it, healthcare system, imagine we've got 100 beds. If we carry on the way we are, 
then we'll have more people needing beds than we've got available. So if we've got 100, if we've got 200 people, that means there's 100 people that the health service, the NHS, cannot provide for. However, if we take some sort of action, we can flatten that curve like we just demonstrated with the bamboo stick. We can flatten the curve, spread it. So by flattening it, what we do is we try and keep the number of cases below 100. So that way, everybody that requires a bed, the NHS is in a position to be able to cater for them. And then we don't have a situation where our health service is overwhelmed. Now, what can we do? So I'm going to pass it over to Mr Barr and he will take you through the government guidance and how that links into all of us trying to flatten this curve, trying to lower it. Mr Barr? Thank you. So as Mr Ali said earlier, there's some things that we can do that the government brought out and one of the things that we can do, which you can see on this channel, Mr Wilson demonstrating, is washing our hands. So important to wash your hands, 20 seconds, you can do it by singing happy birthday twice or there's some videos on YouTube that you can watch which are 20 seconds. So you're rubbing them back, front, making sure you get all your fingers, your thumbs, give everything a good scrub, use warm, warm water with soap, only 20 seconds that will kill off the infection and they're recommending that you do that more frequently. So once every hour would be quite good. If you cough or sneeze you can catch it, kill it and bin it in a tissue. So you catch in a tissue, scrunch it up bin it and then you can also go in there and wash your hands afterwards and then lastly the original guidelines was to avoid touching your face with your hands so your eyes, your mouth and your nose just to stop the spread of the disease but last night the Prime Minister in his announcement brought out some extra guidelines to bring in so what they're saying is no handshakes, hugs or kisses Sorry. but what you can do with that though is they're saying uh, you can bump elbows or you can touch feet to try and say hello to someone unless you're living with them. Don't go to restaurants, parties, big social gatherings, they're going to, maximum of two people is what they're going to do now and they have given the police the power to disperse you. You need to stay at least two metres apart so a way to remember this is most of you have got a phone so you hold your phone out in front of you and they're saying it's that plus that again just to make sure that you're keeping away. You're meant to avoid contact with your grandparents so only stay in, in contact, in physical contact with the people that you live with. Try not to pass anything on to your loved ones. Keep in touch with one another. Obviously you've all got phones so you can text, you can WhatsApp, you can Skype. There's all these new apps that are coming out now so you can video chat with people, with your friends, family, relatives from afar. And the last but not least, if you feel unwell, just stay in, stay indoors, treat yourself, do a bit of school work, watch Mr Ali's videos, and I'm sure you'll recover quicker than, than normal. Thank you, um, thank you for your time. Um, keep an eye out for further upcoming videos. And just like Mr. Barr said, taking these precautions or, and these measures. So, we have a quick glance at that again. And then we've gone through handshakes, the social distancing. Then ultimately, hopefully, we can help everybody that is around us um, to try and flatten that so that our health service is not overwhelmed and they're able to provide the service that they're there for. Thank you.